Welcome to my presentation on the cardiac physical exam. This presentation is meant to complement the infographic, which I hope you downloaded. I'm Kate Morgan, an acute care nurse practitioner practicing in a hospital in a general cardiology service. Um, I've been in cardiology uh, since 2012, and before that, I was a hospitalist nurse practitioner for about five years, and even before that, an ER nurse for over 10 years. So this presentation is perfect for nurses and nurse practitioners and physician assistants studying for their boards. It's also perfect for nurses and NPs that are studying for the CHFN, which is a certified heart failure nurse exam uh, given by the American Association of Heart Failure Nurses. So let's dive in to the cardiac physical exam. When listening to your patient's heart sounds, you need to go in a systematic order. Start at the aortic area at the right upper sternal border, second intercostal space. Listen for a murmur of aortic stenosis or aortic regurgitation, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Then move to the pulmonic area at the left upper sternal border, second intercostal space. If you feel a heave or a lift in this area, it may indicate pulmonary arterial hypertension. The third area is the tricuspid area located at the fourth intercostal space, left sternal border. The next area is the mitral area at the fifth intercostal space, midclavicular line. Feel around this area for the point of maximum impulse. Displacement laterally can mean left ventricular hypertrophy. Note that the base of the heart is at the top and the apex is at the bottom. And examine the patient from the right side while auscultating, you can also look at the right side of the neck for elevated jugular venous pressure. As a reminder, let's go over what the S1 and S2 heart sounds indicate. S1 is the closure of the mitral and tricuspid valves, and it's loudest at the apex. S2 indicates the closure of the aortic and pulmonic valves, and is loudest at the base. When documenting your cardiac exam, you will need to note if the rhythm is regular, as in normal sinus rhythm, irregular, which could be because of PVCs or PACs, or irregularly irregular, as in atrial fibrillation. A rub is a rough or grating sound that can be heard in a patient with pericarditis. Make sure to look at the echocardiogram for pericardial effusion if you're suspecting that. Now let's talk about some common murmurs. You'll need to practice differentiating between systolic and diastolic murmurs. During the cardiac cycle, the systolic murmurs are heard best between the S1 and S2, and diastolic murmurs are heard just after the S2 and before the S1. In the majority of my experience as a cardiology nurse practitioner, I hear mostly systolic murmurs. And now remember that the S1 is best heard at the apex and represents the closing of the mitral and tricuspid valves. S2 is best heard at the base and represents the closure of the aortic and pulmonic valves. In aortic stenosis, you will hear a systolic crescendo-decrescendo murmur which means that the sound starts loud and then gets softer. It's located in the aortic area and frequently radiates to the carotids. Now, if you palpate the carotid artery, you're looking for the carotid upstroke, and in severe aortic stenosis, it will be weak or reduced. Visualize the blood ejecting from the left ventricle during systole through a tight aortic valve. Aortic regurgitation is a diastolic murmur because after the blood is ejected from the left ventricle through the aortic valve in systole, some of the blood pulls back in the ventri left ventricle due to either damage to the aortic valve leaflets or dilation of the aortic annulus. Chronic aortic regurgitation is best heard at the left sternal border leaning forward at end expiration. 
Aortic regurgitation is uh, sometimes also referred to as aortic insufficiency. Mitral stenosis is a diastolic murmur best heard at the apex with the patient in the left lateral decubitus position. Mitral regurgitation is a systolic murmur because when the left ventricular contracts in systole, blood is forced back through the mitral valve and into the left atrium and may be due to a dilated mitral annulus that occurs due to left ventricular enlargement and dysfunction. This is referred to as functional mitral regurgitation. You may hear this murmur radiate to the axilla or even radiate around the back. Tricuspid regurgitation is a systolic murmur, may be blowing in quality and holosystolic and is best heard at the left sternal border. It also increases with inspiration. This is caused by inadequate closure of the valve leaflets that allow blood to flow backwards from the right ventricle into the right atrium. You may see elevated jugular venous pressure from tricuspid regurgitation. When documenting murmurs, you must give it a grade from one to six. And on the slide I listed out, grade one is very soft and difficult to hear, grade two, medium intensity, grade three is loud intensity, but no thrill when you palpate the heart, grade four, loud intensity with a thrill, grade five, very loud with a thrill, and grade six, no stethoscope is needed to hear this murmur and you will also feel a thrill. With gallops, you may hear either an S3 or an S4. S3 may be heard in a patient um, with heart failure and volume overload, best heard at the apex early in diastole. S4 indicates a stiff, non-compliant ventricle, which is best heard in the apex late in diastole. And note that it is not heard in a patient with atrial fibrillation. Now the neck exam. Examine your patient on the right side with the head of the bed at a 45 degree angle and ask them to turn their head slightly to the left and relax it against the pillow. You could easily note the elevated external vein distension in patients with uh, volume overload or even pulmonary hypertension and tricuspid regurgitation, but it's more preferable and a bit more difficult to find elevation of the internal jugular vein. If this is elevated, you will see a subtle wave-like appearance. Make sure though to differentiate that from carotid artery pulsations. The internal jugular vein is more of a direct measurement of right atrial pressure. Observe the height at inspiration. Right atrial pressure is measured in centimeters of water and estimated by adding five centimeters to the height of the jugular pulse above the sternal angle of Lewis. Now also hold pressure to the right upper quadrant of the abdomen for about 15 to 30 seconds and observe if this increases the height of the jugular pulse by more than three centimeters. This is called the hepatojugular reflux. As previously mentioned, palpate the carotid pulse Normally, a person has a brisk upstroke, but a patient with severe aortic stenosis will have a reduced upstroke. Thank you so much for watching and be sure to check back for more cardiology videos and come visit me on all my social media platforms and reach out. Let me know if you felt this video was helpful. Thanks.